Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us again today. My name is Halima and I'm a senior fellow at QSite this fall. And basically the schedule for today is on our webpage. But the first thing we'll start off with is a speech from the co-founder of QSite. So Chad, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. How am I doing? Can we see that? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for participating in this event and thanks for being up at this time. Um, I know many, but not all of you. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Chad Topaz. Um, my day job is that I'm professor of mathematics at Williams College, um, but um, I'm the co-founder along with Jude Higdon of QSide. And I wanted to take a few minutes just to try to give you the big picture of um, what we do at QSide and ways that you can either get more involved or maintain your involvement moving forward um, if you're interested and we hope you are. So my inspiration for QSide comes from Ida B. Wells, who I hope you know, I mean, I, if you don't know who Ida B. Wells is, I hope you take some time to go uh, look her up. She was an amazing, phenomenal human, a civil rights leader, educator, investigative journalist, also like myself, a Chicagoan. And she said this thing that the way to right wrongs is to shine the light of truth upon them. And that really serves as the conceit of Q side. We believe that there are many forms of that light of truth, but an especially powerful one is a quantitative approach, right? Mathematics, data science, computing. Um, there are many forms of that light, but, but I think those quantitative ones have maybe been historically underutilized, which for people who have the skills and or interests of this group right here, um, creates a big opportunity to do some good. Um, so QSide, we are a 501c3 tax exempt nonprofit organization. We were co-founded in 2019. So we like to say that we're toddler aged, um, but despite being toddler aged, we um, have gotten a fair bit of ten attention, which we are not ashamed of bragging about a little bit. So here's some of the places we have been covered. Um, this is the model we use for our work. It's community partnership action research model. And this is what you are experiencing in your teams right here at Datathon. Um, but we always think that the way to do the best work and make the biggest impact is to have people who have subject matter expertise, right? Expertise in social justice issues, um, policing, incarceration, the law, whatever the issue is, um, as well as activists, as well as the people with the quantitative skills um, in, in the room. QSide is really focused on bringing this data science and, and quantitative piece, but we firmly believe in, in, in these three sort of constituencies coming together to do this kind of work. Uh, we have five main areas of practice right now. We work in education equity, healthcare equity, diversity and inclusion in arts and media, environmental justice, that's something we want to grow actually. Um, and then we do a lot of work in criminal justice. We have um, sort of a five point strategy for how we do our work. One is that we try to build capacity for doing this interdisciplinary research that brings these groups together, right? So like, it's actually not often that you get, you know, like, prison abolitionists and statisticians in and a policymaker and in the room together right like so we're trying to build capacity and and bring groups together and train people to be able to talk to each other and collaborate um, we of course incubate conduct and disseminate quantitative social justice research so we do research probably publish them um, a lot of the work we do has to do with data transparency so we um, have a great interest in and experience with taking data that is in principle supposed to be public, but is in practice not public or is not very accessible and making it available to the public in, in easy and transparent ways. Um, we're always trying to elevate the work of voices that are marginalized in academia and other fields participating in social justice work. And then we don't just want to take what we do and write papers about it. We want to leverage our discoveries through partnerships and make, make things happen. And so just on the note of that sort of research to action pipeline, I'll show you a few quick examples of things we've done and ways that they have had an impact. So we did a project that was on um, quantitative modeling of 
uh, diversity in college admissions and on undergraduate campuses. And um, one of the co-authors of that work created an interactive modeling tool online um, where you can tune model parameters and see what the effect is on student demographic diversity um, on a particular college campus. We've uh, collaborated in the Berkshire County, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Court Watch project, which is aimed at bringing transparency to what's going on in pretrial hearings, like bail hearings for people who are um, being prosecuted. Um, and that work that we did was picked up by uh, the press. And then it was also picked up by the press that the DA had read our work and was responding to it. Um, and that's led to an ongoing relationship with that district attorney's office. Uh, we did a large project that had to do with the diversity of artists held in the collection, whose works are held in the collections of major US art museums. And maybe unsurprisingly, that work revealed that most of the artists are white and most of the artists are men. And one of the museums that came out looking uh, particularly uh, dominated by white men was the National Gallery of Art in DC. And they actually invited us to come um, to their campus, to their museum and do a sort of private hackathon um, not dissimilar to what we're doing here, um, but based in, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear our dogs in the background, uh, but it was based on their own internal data. We got to hack their own internal uh, data and, uh, and we were able to present the results we found to their curators um, and make some suggestions for how they might be able to diversify their collections. Um, recently, we were contacted by the Puerto Rican Association of Defense Lawyers. They were writing an amicus brief um, to the U.S. Supreme Court. They needed help doing some quantitative research. We did that. And so on the lower right of the right-hand page, right, you'll see Q-Side's name now in on a brief at the Supreme Court, which was very exciting. And then the last example I'll show you was our uh, Life Unseen campaign. Um, this is a campaign we were contracted to do by LifeWater, which is a beverage brand of Pepsi. And their primary philanthropic cause is bringing attention to and addressing issues of underrepresentation in the arts. So we did all the research for their public um, campaign around representation, uh, sort of gender and race representation in fashion, in Hollywood films, in popular music, and also in art museums. And that campaign, um, and Jude, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's had well well over a million views. Um, and I achieved my lifelong dream of having my work being mentioned in uh, People Magazine. Bill, billion, um, billion, so, billion, not billion, bill, billion. Over a billion impressions worldwide. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Issa Rae, for those impressions. Uh, okay, so I thought I would also just mention for those who are sort of newer to quantitative methods, some of the skills that um, I and others in the QSide network um, engage um, when we do this kind of work. And I will just say before a few years ago, I didn't know most or any of these things. So these are topics that people really at any phase of their career, whether you're an undergraduate student or you are someone who's been a math professor for a while, um, but maybe not working as much in data science and statistics, these are learnable skills. And I just really want to send that message to everyone. Like if you feel moved to continue doing this work, this kind of work is a thing you can do. Um, I'll tell you a little bit now about our QSide programming. Um, we have a colloquium series approximately every two weeks during the academic terms. These are at 4 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Um, you can just join. Uh, you should be receiving the announcement of these through the affiliate network, and you can just join the Zoom, or you can sign up to get the, the Zoom link, and it's a great series of talks. Uh, we run a QSide Fellows program. Um, you heard already this morning from Halima, who's one of our senior fellows. Um, and we have a uh, history now, I think 35 uh, senior or 35 fellows um, who've passed through QSide. You're seeing one of our former fellows, Haley, on screen here. Um, and if you're interested in that program, you can um, reach out and let us know. Uh, we ran this past spring, our very first Data for Justice conference. This is a one day online uh, conference with a pretty high profile uh, New York Times bestselling uh, plenary talk, followed by 10 or 11 talks spanning our core areas of work. Um, you, of course, are here for our inaugural Datathon for Justice. Thank you for being here for that. It's very exciting. Uh, we will certainly plan to continue this in future years. Um, we have an affiliate program. Um, as, as participants in the Datathon for Justice, you are now all affiliates. 
So you will receive um, our announcements, um, you'll be on our mailing list, have access to our Slack community and the colloquium series and so forth. We also have an institutional uh, consortium program. Um, and so uh, you can find the full information about this on our QSide website. I won't list all of the benefits here, but there are many. Um, you can see current members listed here. So we have all types of institutions. We have HBCUs, we have uh, small liberal arts colleges, we have large research universities, um, we have the whole, the whole business. Um, and, you know, QSide is a nonprofit organization and many things that we do, we do without a fee, uh, without a registration fee, um, including our colloquia, including this Datathon for Justice. Okay. And that's because we want to maintain access. But one of the things that does keep us going um, are paying members of our institutional consortium program. So if your department or a group of departments departments or your institution as a whole is interested in joining, um, please reach out and we want to discuss that option with you and encourage you. And I will say that even for the, the consortium program, we ask institutions to pay when they can because it is what allows us to continue to, continue to exist, but we will always prioritize access. So if your institution is not positioned or your department is not positioned to pay, we will absolutely talk about grants with you. Um, there are also going to be some other opportunities moving forward with QSide, and I put a question mark just to tantalize you and make sure you come tomorrow because I believe we will be announcing those tomorrow. And with that teaser, I will hand it back to Jude, I think. Or, or Halima. <laughs> Halima, take it away. <laughs>